when I had to notate the concerto for turntables, the only kind of official system at that time was um, from, is it DJ Radar, is it TTT, how do you call it, TTM? There was TTM notation, and which is a grid-based notation, which I felt was too different to traditional classical notation to incorporate in a score. You know, I, I think it's a good, it's a, a good, very accurate system. But now I've been made aware of S notation of Alex Sonnenfeld, and um, I didn't know about that notation when I wrote the concerto. But had I known about it, I would, I probably would have tried to incorporate it because you can, it looks familiar, it, you see it and you can get a clear idea of what the turntables are doing. There are a few aspects to it that I, I, I might, I, I might, I, I want to see more clear notation of the exact rhythms of the crossfader. That's the one thing. I mean, I, in my notation, I was trying to give a, it, two things, I was trying to give an actual general impression of what it would sound like, kind of give contours almost of the pitch in a way. But I, I knew I, it, it's a very difficult instrument to notate for. And so I think the S notation is actually managing to, to, to notate most aspects of it. Um, it's just about making sure it's as easy as possible for conductors and other musicians to read. And this is, the, this is the, gonna be the issue for S notation or any notation is that nobody wants to suddenly have to learn a whole new notation. I mean, mind you, you know, you have composers like Stockhausen who with his scores will require you to learn a lot of new techniques and things. You know, he's kind of, he created almost a kind of cult around his approach. You know, you take one of his pieces and you, you live it for months. So if, you know, as turntablism becomes more and more accepted, uh, in time, I guess, maybe people will just accept that they've got to learn some extra symbols and stuff. I mean, I think maybe there might be more symbols from traditional Western notation that we can still try and incorporate. Um, I didn't see whether Alex incorporated traditional dynamics, crescendos, diminuendos, forte. I didn't see that, or staccato, staccatissimo, marcato, all these symbols. I think they could be incorporated. So there might be there might be a sort of softened orchestral score version, or you could have two scores. You could have this is how it sounds, and this is what the turntablist has. But I think you know this is it's the he's really to have someone study it to that level is very exciting, and and I think he's really sort of found a very solid, a sort of flawless way. I think that my approach makes sense, but it's. It's kind of full of, it's got contradictions and it's got holes in it. Whereas Alex, it look, it's found a method that's pretty solid, you know, and, and, and kind of waterproof, you know, it, 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 it's, it works. So I think I would definitely want to try and incorporate it. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit, you have to take a big breath. You think, God, I've got, I've, I've finished composing, I've done the score, and now I've got to make sure it's all in proper S notation. You know, maybe he can offer a service or something, you know, a sort of, uh, of uh, doing the proper helping pe helping people score it. I mean, I think he'll have to in a way if he wants it to to spread. So, so he's probably going to get an email from me if if we if I'm going to try and incorporate it in the next next piece. I mean, you potentially I could try and convert the old scores into S notation as well. I think that wouldn't be bad. Yeah. Great. Cool.